Hi, I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and please hit like. And today we're going to talk about centering a piece on a lathe. All right, today I'm going to use a partially made balance staff to help me here. I think there's some rotico stuck on it, but let's get rid of that. And what I want to do is show uh, how to center this piece when it's very small on the lathe. And usually the problem exists not when you first start cutting the balance staff on a lathe, but after you've cut the front end of there, the top end of that balance staff that includes the um, the actual balance that's uh, riveted on and includes the uh, the collar that's used for the uh, collet for the hairspring. Then you turn that around and you've got to set that up and chuck that up on your lathe. And that back end part that uh, that's in the tweezers right now that's kind of long, you're going to be cutting that and tapering it to cut the um, the right taper to fit the uh, roller table on and the tricky part is to get that centered so that it doesn't uh, so it's true it doesn't rattle back and forth or move back and forth it's absolutely true so I'm going to look at various techniques for doing that so the first thing I'm going to do is chuck this thing up and find the right size call it I'm hoping that this 13 is the right size and I'm going to hug this part right where the collar is for the uh, balance itself so I'm just going to loosen that up a bit and then I'm just going to give it a little squeeze. And so that's now hugged. So I've now grabbed it there. I can also go just a bit back and grab it where the, uh, where the collar would be for the hairspring collet. So I can grab it there as well. So let's just use this for now and see what happens. So put my pieces of stuff away here and uh, my rotico. And now I've got this kind of sitting there and it is, it, it'll run and it might not run true, I'm not sure, but it'll run. So what I'm going to do is, is run the lathe here and have a look. And I can see right now that this thing is going up and down and up and down and up and down. So it's not running true right now. So, and I'm not sure if I can get a closer shot for you there. So if you have a peek at that camera on the bottom, let's see if I can get that to focus a bit. And there we go. We got a little bit of a focus there. So get that camera focused. Come on, focus for me. Oh my God. Oh me, oh my. <laughs> Whenever you want to focus something, it doesn't work. So I got to put my hand back down here. So there it is, focus with my hand down. And if I turn that, you can see that going up and down a bit. So obviously if you're trying to cut that roller table part, and it's going up and down like that, you're going to fail miserably. So the first thing I try to do is actually use my fingernail on this. So you just have to back it off a bit, but not too much. So it's not, not tight but also not too loose. You don't want it to fall out. And I use a finger, I play guitar, so I got nice long fingernails on one hand. So I use the back of my fingernail here and I can turn this like this and just push up from the back of your fingernail. So that didn't work because it actually took the piece out of the collet. Let me tighten that up again. So that's not working because I don't have a lot to grab on. And if I push up, it's going to take it out. But that is one technique where you can center the part. Now if this were as a long uh, piece of blued steel, then that would be different, right? Hang on a second. Everybody bugs you when you're working on a lathe. <laughs> so, so that fingernail technique works better if you've got a long piece. Like you've, if you've got this chucked up and it's a blued steel rod and you can push up on that and not worry about this falling out. But it doesn't work well if you're working on the back end of a balance staff because there's not a lot of material grabbing that collet. But that's one way of doing it. The other way is actually using uh, a piece of wood like this here and the same exact same thing. And it works better with a long piece of blued steel in here. There's no issue at all. And you'd spin this and then push up. And I always push up and inward towards the collet a bit. And that sometimes will level the piece of work up, up. So you can ensure that it is running true when you're cutting it with your graver. So that works well, again, with a long piece of steel, but it doesn't work well when you've got a small um, piece of 
piece that's chucked up. And right now, like I said, there's not much of the material that's chucked up, but it's uh, as much as I can grab. And that'll hold it when I tighten this up once I get it uh, centered properly. So let's take a look at the best technique for doing it. So in this technique, you actually have to have a tailstock installed. And the best uh, way of doing this is to have a collet holding tailstock and pick a collet that's just slightly bigger than the diameter of the piece of metal you're trying to work on. So I'm going to pick that collet right now. So I'm going to measure the back end with my doozy M gauge and see what size collet I might use here. So I'll just pinch that with the doozy M gauge and it looks like it's a 5 or a 6. It looks like it's a 6. And that's 0.6 millimeters that it's hitting. So it's hitting right around there on the doozy M gauge. So that's 0.6. So if I look at my collets down here, it's going to show as a 6. So this is a 6 collet. Now I'd be curious to see if it actually fits. So you take your collet here, and I'm bleeding to death here. So anyway, and fit that on. Is that going to fit? And that does go on nicely. Now it goes on nicely, so does a 5 also go on? Because I want it on as good as possible, but if a 5 goes on, then I'm in luck. But it does not look like a 5 will fit. It tries, but it doesn't do it. So it is a 6. So now I've got to chuck that up in my collet holding tailstock. So I have one here. It's a beautiful collet holding tailstock. There it is there. And that's the other end of it. And this is a micrometer too. It allows me to do very intricate work. So I'm going to roll this in here and see if I can fit this on. There we go. And I'll back this off to allow me to push it forward, right, like that. So back this off a bit, like this, and then put the uh, put the collet in in place, like that. So that should screw in nice and easy here. Let's see if that works. Hopefully, I'll tighten the top here to allow that to screw in properly. And see if I can. Some of these collets aren't as good as others. Some some of the collets just don't slide into this tailstock as good as others do. Now, there we go. That slid in nicely. Now I'm going to see if the threaded part will grab the grab the end and it's doing that, which is nice. I'm tightening this up on the other end. And we just turn this for a second to show you. So all I'm doing is tightening this part here, which will pull that in. And then I want to get that close to this part here. So let's just tighten that up. And I don't want to tighten it too much because it's going to squeeze the the collet in and actually the collet will will kind of go inside here and shrink in size the diameter will and I don't want to squeeze the part I just want to get the part close um, so I'm just going to move it up like that and then I'm going to move the camera a bit so you can see what I'm doing from this angle loosen the top here and then move this towards the part and let's see if this if the part actually goes in it's having a little bit of an issue, but as I turn it here, it is fitting in now to the tip. So that's in. This is tight. This is tight now. And now I loosen this up just a bit like that and turn it. And now when I turn it, I'm basically turning a part on both ends. So there's no way that the part cannot be true, right? And I just noticed the part was slipping out a bit because I loosened it up a bit too much. So let me just loosen this up more, tighten that up, and then turn it. There we go. And I'll get the other camera so you can see what that looks like. And there we go. Let's see if I can get that focus somehow. There we go. And this is it turning now. Um, it's funny though. I've, I, it, it's, it wants to jump out of where it's uh, holding it, right? So let me just stop this and get it back in. So in turning this, it tends to want to jump out, so it's not staying in place. So I'm going to try to grab it um, where the hairspring collet is instead of where the where this collet is. It just seems to want to jump out. All right, just like uh, all of the uh, Chicago PD shows, it's a handheld camera. So I've grabbed it now where the collet for the hairspring is on the uh, left and I've got this one on the right is pretty much free 
as you can see. And I'm not sure whether this is, is lined up or not yet. When I turn it, does it rattle? It does. Do you see that going up and down? So that's a problem. I gotta get this thing somehow focusing. That's good enough there. So there we go. See it going up and down? So what I want to do then is move this in. See if I can get this to fit inside that hole. <laughs> there we go. So that's moved in now. And then I just tighten this where it is on the top like that. And now basically I'm turning between ends, right? So so I want to be able to turn that now like this. And there's no way this can go up and down. It'll just be turning between centers like this. So I can spin that between centers. And once I've done that, all I do is tighten this up and I've got myself a uh, piece of material that is perfectly centered. So that's how you do it. It's worked for me uh, before making small parts. Um, if you actually need to push this in to make sure it's steady, you can always ride this ride this right to the end and then push it in to make sure everything is steady, right? And then pull it back out. So that actually works as well. So, so now this is centered properly and should be running true. And as a final shot, I'll just run this quickly. And make sure that I've got my piece in here nicely and there's no issue. So that's it. That's kind of how you do it. I wish my focus was a lot better on this camera. I apologize for that, but that's the technique. And I did tighten this up just a bit because it was allowing it to move a bit. So make sure you got to tighten once you've done that. Just tighten the spindle in the back and your, your part is now true.